Chris Plus here from the Wrestling Chatter YouTube Studios. Subscribe to the Wrestling Chatter right here on YouTube. Of course, on the 15th and the 30th of every single month, this, this is Extreme Memories. Today on the show, my old boss, Rob Black. No, 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 no. My other old boss, Houston Curtis. Now, you've heard XPW 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. This would be XPW 2.0. Do you remember, fans, the reunion shows, Cold Day in Hell, XPWX, the 10-year anniversary in Hollywood back in 2009? Well, Houston Curtis was at the helm of Big Vision Entertainment, a major distribution company in North America, and he was a distributor at the time of XPW. We talk all about that, the reunion shows, his involvement in professional wrestling, period, the advent of backyard wrestling, the big craze in the late 90s. He was at the helm of that. We talk all about that. Everything XPW, everything Houston Curtis, Big Vision Entertainment. This is Extreme Memories with Houston Curtis. Uh, hey, boss, how you doing? My old boss right here, Houston Curtis. Um, welcome to Extreme Memories, sir. Mr. Claus, can I hear the scream? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to get that. Oh my gosh! I, I, um, uh, yeah, yeah. You when it's when it's uh once you say something shocking, you'll hear it. That's usually how it works. But... I can't even I can't even imitate it. But we used to love. It. Yeah, we would crack up so much when we would hear that scream. How you oh doing, man? God. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, uh, uh, pleasure seeing you again, man. Um, we go back, of course, to Big Vision Entertainment, and we'll talk all about that. Um. But this is a uh, this is a show uh, revolving around XPW, and uh, you, you this should be a very interesting interview with you, man, because uh, you have your hands in a lot of different things. As of course we see the poker right behind you. That's a it's big my, part. It's my show going, yeah. Live uh, at oh, the bike. Awesome. Okay, we'll we'll talk all about that. We'll put the description or the, the link to your show uh, in the comments sure. and in the description. We'll talk about that. Um, speaking of XPW, Houston. Um, before Cold Day in Hell, before it got into um, the hands of Big Vision Entertainment, back in the day, when did you first hear about XPW? Oh, man. Well, you got to remember, uh, Rick Marr and I uh, had started a company uh, called, the, the first company was just literally Backyard Wrestling Inc. And around the time that um, XPW was starting, uh, was probably as close to the same time we were producing the backyard wrestling videos. Right. I had been an executive at MTV and uh, I was part of the, you know, I was one of the first guys who ever saw a jackass clip before, you know, the world had ever seen it. And, and then, um, then these backyard wrestling kind of videos started coming to surface and, and uh, Rick and I formed a company and put together the best of backyard wrestling. And it kind of blew up as a late night TV phenomenon yeah. and we're both huge wrestling fans. And at the time, you know, it was that attitude era, I guess you would say, and X in, uh, uh, you had ECW out of Philly, uh, that was crushing it. And, uh, you know, Rob made a very smart decision of starting this West coast version of that. And we were fans. So it really started out as us being fans of the show. And, uh, you know, uh, saying, man, we got to go, we got to go check out these crazy XPW matches. Uh, cause we were putting together these crazy backyard wrestling videos. Right. And you know, it didn't take long for our paths to cross at that point. Right. Do you, do you remember what the first show was you checked out what, the, what arena it was in? <laughs> okay. It was, um, I think the first show that I went to see, it was the, um, it was it was like all dirt. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was uh, it, it was like a, where, where's that Pico Rivera Sports Arena? That's it. It was the yeah. Pico Rivera. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it was a great match. Uh, we had a blast, and uh, you know, then we started talking to uh, Rob and and Kevin, uh -huh. and uh, and we we at that point, you know, Beckett Wrestling kind of blew up really fast, and then. Uh, Rick and I formed a company uh, called uh, XEG, which later, when when I started Big Vision, Rick kind of went uh, on with XEG and I started Big Vision. But before that had happened, 
we were distributing a lot of uh, kind of extreme reality video. And we had talked to Rob and Kevin about their distribution and they weren't happy with what was going on uh, with their distribution at the time. Right. Uh, so they signed a deal with us and that's how we started out doing business together. We were uh, essentially just distributing the content at first. Right. And that led to bigger things. Yeah, sure did. Um, and then, um, but that, so, okay, you're coming in around that time. That was like right before, kind of toward the end of XPW, I would, I would guess to say 2002. And then we went to Philadelphia pretty much right. done. For, at the time, we're pretty much done with LA. Uh, little did we know we came back, but then little did we know the company was going to fold. Uh, so you kind of came in at the end. Um, were you, were you, did it, did it go, did it turn to you while XPW, the first version was still in effect? Did you? I'm trying to remember the exact details, but I think Rick and I actually, before it folded and before it was, you know, it, I, I can't remember if it was, but it had to have been after Philadelphia, obviously. Okay. Um, Rob came to us and he you know, he was looking to kind of get out of it at the time. And so we purchased the entire company, um, yeah. purchased the entire company, all of the, uh, videos, everything. And we didn't know if we were going to, you know, continue to put on shows, but we thought that, uh, it was a big piece of wrestling history. Uh, you know, uh, we were pr proud to have been a part of what, you know, had been done thus far with XPW and we wanted to at least be able to keep um, XPW alive in terms of the library content and repackaging and repurposing it. And we had thoughts of doing future shows as well. Right. And then it was soon after that, uh, that I called Kevin Kleinrock and said, Hey, Kevin, you know, if you're looking for a job, because you know, he was always such a, a hustler oh, uh, and I was launching big vision and I said, why don't you come over and work, work for me? And so that's how Kevin ended up at, uh, at big vision. It was after Rick and I had, so Rick and I acquired and owned XBW under a separate company. And, uh, and then both of our companies kind of did things with the library over the years. But, um, I think, I believe it was technically backyard wrestling Inc that bought XPW. Interesting. If I remember correctly. Might've been, oh, I yeah, I think it was backyard wrestling Inc. It's amazing how that all kind of unfolded because, People would think like, okay, uh, XPW folded. Uh, Houston owns X, uh, XPW, but now Kevin's working for him. I ended up working for you. But it really just kind of organically happened. It wasn't just this thing that, okay, transitioned overnight, and this is how it is. It, it These pieces had to kind of come uh, together organically on their own. And, and that's um, interesting to the fan's point of view because the fan's point of view kind of looks at this from the outside and, oh, these people all must have been in it in on it together the whole time, but it really wasn't like that. Yeah, I mean, organic is a great word, Chris. Uh, you know, things just kind of happen. And um, I, I do remember that every moment that I spent with Rob, which weren't that many, um, they were always very entertaining. I always really yeah. liked the guy, you know, and yeah. just really thought he was just such a, a great character and loved uh, the fact that he was, um, you know, a scrappy entrepreneur. And, yeah. and he did kind of like-minded in the way that he just did things that he was passionate about, you know, right. and which was, you know, Rick and I, we were the same way. We wanted to, you know, anybody could go, you know, sell roof shingles for a living or whatever, but uh, it takes a certain type of person to get into the, you know, pro wrestling business. And, yeah. and it definitely uh, takes someone passionate, right? Um, one of my, one of my greatest memories with Rob was, uh, this is probably a story not many people have ever heard. Um, we were doing a video game deal with the backyard wrestling. Okay. And that was right around the time that we had acquired, uh, XPW, um, or maybe it was right before, uh, I can't remember the exact date. It's probably right before. Cause we were talking to Rob about, Hey, maybe there's a, you know, maybe there's an XPW video game deal that we could do. So we had the, these executors from IDOS, the makers of Tomb Raider in town. And we were, I think, uh, they wanted to go to, I mean, these guys like, you know, when they would come down from like Silicon Valley and so they partied hard, <laughs> you know, like they, they were not sissies, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
And uh, so Rob, uh, you know, Rob's other business, Rob brings a couple of girls and we have a limo and we're with these guys and it's partying. And all of a sudden, you know, all these guys are like jumping in this limo with these girls and they're riding around the block a few times. <laughs> and then at the end of the night, I was like, well, I didn't ask what they did. I'm sure they were just talking. But I said, uh, I, I remember saying to Rob, I said, so do, do I owe you money for what just happened? With? He's like, you handle your business. I'll handle mine. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, and, and I'm, and you're not sure. I mean, you're probably leaving stuff out, but yeah, that's, I can, <laughs> yeah, I'm I, leaving some stuff out. I, I can uh, attest to, I can attest to that's accurate, even though I wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Uh, but that was that was Rob, and it was actually a real big thing of it, him to, you know, it's like, you know, you insult me by offering m me money. You know, you handle your business. Yeah. This is my business. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, and and then you know, I, I we ended up doing uh, well. You would know better than me how many shows we did under after Rick and I owned it. I remember the one in Hollywood that. Uh, um, was like the first resurgence show well the the first resurgence show i remember I, I i mean correct me if i'm wrong but i thought it was um the one in redondo beach cold day in hell that was in 2000 yes cold, cold day in hell and then and then a year later 2009 since xpw started in 99 that was the 10-year reunion show right and i don't know if you remember this but <clears throat> unfortunately there was a lot we had some technical problems that day with the cameras with the sound and all that so that one never unfortunately never got to post-production oh DVD. well somebody yeah. forgot to hit the record button what the hell happened I, probably, <laughs> knowing knowing xpw that's probably what happened yeah well but you I, know it's uh when you're running uh, uh these shows on these tiny micro budgets sometimes uh important things like that uh, can be overlooked unfortunately what, what was your thoughts on on the what I feel is was a very good show and it was the most successful one I think under Big Vision XPW 2.0 whatever you want to call it um, what was which was Cold Day in Hell it was Supreme Necro Butcher it was the whole the whole gamut Vampiro Chaos I mean a lot of the WSX guys were there right sure and uh, it was a very good show it was very well produced too and. Uh, yeah. And um and it, and it and it to this day gets gets good reviews, um, good, uh, uh, very little criticism, if you will. Yeah, well, I it was it, you know I, Kevin uh, at that point I had so much stuff going on. Yeah, you remember that because we were just doing a lot of uh, things uh, uh, at that point. We were we had you know a big TV show with CBS, the Blackjack Show in development, and. Um, and I can't remember where this fell in terms of WSX, I believe it was before WSX, right? But but there were a lot of things going on. Um, and Cold, you know, Cold, Cold, Cold and Hell was after WSX, right? After WSX, yeah. Right. okay, yeah, yeah, it was just after. So I was still dealing with, I think, um, uh, you know, we we had so many releases going on. Kevin took the reins as he always did with the XPW stuff. And, uh, you know, and it turned out great. Um, you know, Ke Kevin has such a passion for wrestling as, as all you guys did. And, uh, I knew that, um, you know, he's the kind of guy, like, I know I can just turn him loose and it's gonna, as long as he has, uh, uh, a decent crew behind him, he's going to put out a great product. He really yeah. would. Yeah. And you said it, you hit it on the head with, uh, that guy hustles. And I don't think I've ever met anybody that can work the way he does, you know, yeah, one of, one of the Kevin's, one of the, uh, just most genuine, good hearted, hardworking people I've ever met. You know, he's, uh, he's a dynamo and, uh, man, the, the kid has had, you know, he's, he gets served up a bad beat and he just takes it in stride yeah. and keeps on moving. And, uh, I have a lot of respect for Kevin Kleinrock. Right, right here too. Uh, same, and uh, and he's he's a, amazing at finding whatever he needs to find in, in an office. That's an absolute disaster. I don't know how he knows where everything is. <laughs> yeah, well, one thing he he found it wasn't in the office, but he knew he knew. You know, I grew up. Uh, Rick and I both actually grew up in the Midwest, and the wrestling show that we grew up watching was uh, on Channel Eleven. It was Wrestling at the Chase. 
Oh yeah. And Kevin went on and, and got me the full collection of every episode. This was like Rufus R. Jones. And, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, it was just some great stuff. Uh, there was a lot of stuff with Ric Flair, but Ric Flair, would, he was on the NWA circuit. So he'd come in to do yeah. the local performance and the big guy, uh, there was, it was Dick Murdoch, but uh, Dick, the bruiser was a local yeah. guy that was, uh, you know, would always get to, um, uh, be matched up with the the more national guys like rick flair when he came in and stuff right. uh and he found me that entire uh series and i always thought that was so cool because i was like that was like what i watched growing up as a kid you know and that uh, and that's and that's something like talking about wrestling today it's it's very um there's something different about whatever generation you're from or whoever's from it's that it's that remembering how you liked it when you were a kid. And like you said, you, you grabbed this wrestling thing that you remembered as a kid. I remember doing the same thing and you didn't, uh, for me, I like, I'd end up watching that. I was more into it because our mindset is that 10 year old kid that loved wrestling. And I think we, we all in our own ways carried that into what we did in pro wrestling, whether it's your position, mine, Kevin's or the wrestlers. I always say like, you know, every elementary school, kids school loves wrestling then in mm -hmm. junior high it's okay then in high school everyone kind of grows out of it it's it's a kitty thing except for the few of us that like even got more <laughs> <people with that. laughs> right right yeah and i would say that um you know obviously uh you know kevin uh qualified there and, and mm -hmm. as did did rob and yourself and, and definitely um Rick Marr, uh, to a huge degree, who's been my partner for many, many years, uh, on various projects and, and myself as well. Uh, but, um, you know, when I first kind of started getting back into wrestling, actually before backyard wrestling that now I'm, I'm in Hollywood and I'm, I'm a development executive MTV. The first opportunity, uh, that I had to kind of pitch anything wrestling related was ECW. And it was through Rick. So Rick and I had been talking. He knew I was a development executive in TV. He was an MBA, um, had a business gig for a Fortune 500 company back in the Midwest. And I'd always been trying to get him to move out. And uh, he single-handedly tracked down Paul Heyman uh, when ECW was about to do a deal with uh, the Nashville Network. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. And we i got a six episode series greenlit for mtv and we put it out there as a as an offer and um and they took the they took the the nashville network deal because it was a longer you know commitment um and i think you know probably they probably made the right move at the time because mtv would have um you know would have made it more difficult. We can talk about where, you know, how we eventually yeah. did go back to MTV, but, but, um, you know, they would have probably wanted to get their hands on it too much at, at that time. And it, it just wouldn't have been the right timing for that. Not that WSX was the right timing either, but yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, but that's where, that was what first got me. That was the first kind of thing that Rick and I worked on together. And then we immediately started collaborating on backyard wrestling and I was using my literally using my MTV email address to contact all these kids who had these feds all over the country. Yeah, hey, we're putting together a best of backyard wrestling video, you know, send your video to we had a P.O. box. And all of a sudden we walked in there one day and it's flooded with tape. And yes. then I convinced Rick to Rick moves out and we work on it together and we'd be watching, you know, like an hour and 30 minutes in. And it's just like two kids on a trampoline. And all of a sudden an hour and 37 minutes little Johnny's on top of mom and dad's roof doing a moonsault wrapped in barbed wire going to a flaming table. Yeah. <laughs> Bingo. We have yeah. some. Yeah. Right. Secret underground fight clubs are risking their lives and we have it all yeah. caught on tape. Yeah. So that's how it all got started. And then XBW was such a natural extension. It was the pro version of what we were putting out. And, right. uh, and you know, and, but we were all what Rob was doing and what we were doing. We were, uh, we were kind of riding the heat of that era, you know? Uh, and it, it kind of came of, of this extension out of WWE that, that went to ECW that started doing this more hardcore stuff that WWE couldn't really do. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then Rob's like, well, fuck that. I'm going to even be more hardcore. 
right. you know, and then we're like, yeah, we're going to do it with kids <laughs> you know, in their backyards, right. you know? So we were all young and, 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 and we all loved wrestling and, and love the big spots and, and stuff like that. So it just made sense for us to kind of all come together. Really did. Um, I mean, I remember at Big Vision years later, those boxes of those videotapes that the kids sent in were all still there. And it was like, <laughs> wow, uh, cutting room yeah. floor stuff, for, you know. Yeah, like Brexville Wrestling Federation, you yeah. know, from Brexville, Ohio. You and, know, and, which, by the way, is where Dog 20 came out of. <laughs> oh, right. I, I can't remember. Uh, I remember we were watching. We popped in a few. We popped in a few. And I don't know if you remember this. I mean, like you said, there were hundreds, maybe thousands of these tapes. Oh, yeah. I remember one of them, uh, Devin, if you remember Devin, shout out to Devin. We were popping hey, in. And when we were, when, when, um, when two of the kids were wrestling, you hear one of their moms call them back to the house, right? <laughs> right. It was always so great, yeah. man. Some of the, the, the uh, commentary these kids had, Rick and I would sit and watch this stuff. We would be laughing with tears in our eyes, you know, because some of them were very creative, you yeah. know? Yeah. So we had a lot of fun making those videos and, you know, it obviously did really well for us. It was a life changing moment. You right. know, uh, we, we, it, it was one of those things that just kind of, you know, it was, it was my, our first million dollar idea. We'll put it that way. Uh, and it just blew up. And, and, that, and that would be the, the catalyst. Would you say Houston, like the first big break to put you guys on the map was the backyard wrestling entity. Absolutely. We did. Uh, and, and, you know, we did, we did several uh, backyard wrestling videos and then we did the backyard wrestling babes behind the scenes uncensored, oh, yeah. which I know you did kind of a, uh, 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 copy. I know I distributed the second version of what was that? Bikini brawl. Bikini brawls. Yeah, I mean, we, had, for, we put out bikini brawls too. And I was like, whatever happened to bikini brawls one, where did that right. one go? Right. <laughs> I think you started with two. I don't know. The sequel is so good that we didn't even do that. <laughs> but then we did, uh, we did, uh, so we started with Backyard Wrestling and then the Backyard Babes Behind the Scenes Uncensored. And then we went on to do Ghetto Brawls, Brawl and Broads, World's Wildest Street Fights, World's Wildest College Parties. You know, all of those videos were crushing it because you got to remember this was pre-YouTube, right. right? And uh, if you wanted to get something that was different, um, you know, you had to go to uh, the special interest aisle in a video store yeah. or go to a specialty shop like Newberry comics or, or one of these pro wrestling, you know, sites that uh, was the big one that was sell the videos back then. Um, R and H or. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I know which one you're talking about. Uh, it'll come back to me, but I... they sold shoot videos and stuff like that. Right. But you know, you had to find these places to, to buy this content. Well, you know, one RF, time RF videos are a video RF video at one time, uh, you know, between Rick and I both, we like controlled the special interest aisle in Best Buys around right. the country, you know, and, bef and before them was FYE and yeah, Best Buy FYE. And, you know, there's so many video chains and then, you know, we all know video went the way of the Dodo and uh, YouTube came and, you know, things change. Well, that's actually what, what part of my job was. Kevin would have me um, kind of, talk to some of these distributors about what, what we have new coming out now with big vision and kind of sell, sell this new product on the success of the products you were talking about. And I right. had a sheet that I would read to the distributors, you know, uh -huh. and that was the end days of that. We were right at the end. Yeah. Like you said, that was it. And um, kind of like how I, uh, you know, tell people that are getting into wrestling and all this and, I said, just, just matter of factly say, you know, I got to tell you, it was so different being on television back in those days versus today. Cause when we were on television, there was no YouTube. That was, you're right. on TV. Yeah. You're on TV. You're, there's 40 cable channels and those 40 channels are the amount of people on the, those channels is it for the whole North America for being on TV. It was so different now with, you know, with YouTube, everybody's on TV. You know? Yeah. And now you ask kids like uh, you mentioned MTV and these kids be like, what's MTV? You know, they don't even know right, anymore. Right. You know, yeah, um, we were, with WSX, we were like right at the end when things really began to shift at that time. Yeah, I was really, um, you know, I'm really proud of WSX and, uh, and I would never um, uh, 
try and take uh, anything away from, you know, how WSX emerged. WSX would not have happened without XPW right. and Backyard yeah. Wrestling. That's you know, right. it was an extension of of that. And yeah. uh, I mean, look, you know, you were the first and only call that we wanted to make for our lead commentator. You know, we had to cast the guy to sit next to you, which I think, we, you know, we did well. Brad Ernst, he's gone right. on to have a great career, right? Yeah, but right. the two of you together were fantastic. Oh, thank and, you. And uh, I remember the first time that they watched your tape over at MTV. Um, you know, it was a wrestling series that was kind of treated a lot differently than most wrestling because it really did go through the standard network development process where, yeah. you know, most wrestling, it, it comes in like, you know, kind of like a sports package, right? Right. Yeah. Um, and this was picked up like a license fee deal, you know, uh, and you're getting a per episode fee, you know, it's like selling a reality TV show and, um, uh, and it was an exciting time, you know, and they, they made us do obviously a lot of things we didn't want to do. We didn't want to do a half hour show. We didn't want to, you know, we, we, you know, it's like, we want you to be, it has to be crazier than anything you've ever seen. However, it can't be crazy in the way that kids could do it at home and kill themselves. <laughs> so then we're sitting where we're like, and that's how the exploding time bomb death match yeah, evolved yeah, yeah. and people are getting electrocuted and the camera's shaking. That was all out of our, our, those network notes. They would give us those notes and we'd sit and brainstorm and, you know, come up with this crazy stuff. Right. And, uh, and I think it was a lot of fun and it's a real cool slice of uh, wrestling history now. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's kind of, becoming a, a a trendy thing now in the in the independent wrestling world um people talking about it and stuff on youtube so uh, there's a resurgence to bring it back so yeah I've, I've been hearing these things and and actually i'll tell you one thing I, i'd love to get your audience's take on whether if they'd want to see this or not i have so i have all the masters right for for uh wsx yeah. all of the uncut unedited line cuts so you remember how long those matches were and we would oh, cut yeah. them down oh. to 24 minutes basically with commercials. Yes. So I've got them all there. I've got never before seen stuff that was not even released on our DVD compilation. Um, wow. And all the full matches, all the full performances from the bands. I've got all of that. And I think that would probably be pretty uh, cool to put that, out. Don't you think? That would be very cool. And yeah. Folks, please drop a comment down below <laughs> about that because no, that is very interesting. Because look, yeah, I'd be really interested to know if your audience would be into seeing something like that. And Kevin and I started talking about it a little just like a, over a week ago. And uh, you know, he's he obviously wants to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, and it would be uh, it'd be cool. Might you know have to bring you back into uh to to do some uh new commentary over some of that stuff as well, but those, some of those matches were really long, you know, and we, so there's a lot of stuff that never got seen. Yeah. We, we got there bright early in the morning and we left after the sun was down. Those were long days, you know, for a 22, 24 minute episode. Um, right. So yeah. There's gotta be a lot on the cutting room floor, like you said. Um, yeah. But yeah, shout out because um, you know uh, that's one thing at cold day in hell. It was a great show. But but one thing that was kind of the elephant in the room that was missing was Rob Black at the time. Always. You yeah. can't have, at the end of the day, you can't have XPW without Rob Black. Right. It right. would be like, it would be like trying to have, you know, uh, mm -hmm. NWA back in the day or Texas Championship Wrestling without the Von Erics. You know what I mean? Right. Just right. can't be done. Uh, and, and Rick and I never really, uh, when we bought it, you know, we bought it because we loved the brand and, um, you know, I, at the time it made sense financially for Rob and it, it just, the deal made sense for us all financially. Right. And, um, and we just thought that there was so much content there that we would get around to doing a lot more repackaging, packaging and repurposing than we ended up doing. Cause our lives got so busy and things, uh, you know, change, but things always come back around again, which, you know, is why I know that, uh, you know, Rob had reached out and and uh, uh, has been talking to us about the library. And, and I really hope that he, uh, you know, we close that up with him. He's been talking to Rick mostly, but uh, uh, I, I'd love to see XPW, uh, you know, uh, kick ass again and, and stake its claim in the wrestling universe. 
I think people too, right now, Houston and the social climate, uh, it reminds me of back in the um, <clears throat> early to mid nineties, there was this kind of like wave of, you know, political correctness. And then, and then in the late nineties, like you said, the attitude era, ECW, the Howard Stern, Jerry Springer, boom, there was this big blow up of people <clears throat> kind of li <clears throat> liberating themselves, excuse me. And I, I think that's part of the reason why it's coming back right now. You know, there, mm -hmm. there are people are a little hungry for this kind of uh, unadulterated entertainment uh, and to be OK with it, you know, and to know that they're OK. And that's kind of how we felt when we did that show in Pomona. It felt pretty good. It felt like, yeah. oh, my gosh, I, I, I haven't felt this in a while being in a wrestling ring. It wasn't exactly like it was back in the day. Well, but, it doesn't have to be exactly like it was. But no. you know, what's interesting, I mean, WWE certainly isn't exactly like it used to be back in the day, right? Which is probably right. why there's starting to be a hunger for this in, in many ways. Uh, look, when you go public, there's a certain kind of show you're going to have to do, right? right. And um, <laughs> WWE is a powerhouse and they're a public company and they're never going to be able to deliver certain types of content that the market in the fans a lot of fans still want to see yeah. that's where that's why it's smart for xbw to make a resurgence right now you know right. um they have the freedom they have the freedom to do that yeah I yeah like and 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 there's there's going to be a a, <laughs> a fan base there that wants to see it probably even more more kind of in some ways more starving hungry fans who are missing out because you know they don't have that as much of it as they did back when you know, ECW was going up against, you know, there was ECW and then there was WWE and then there was WCW. <coughs> Some of the most exciting times in pro wrestling history, you know, you know, is when WCW and ECW and uh, WWE were competing, right? Right. You know, it was one of the biggest growth eras of the business. So I say get back out there and, uh, uh, you know, go get them. And don't and don't get yourself publicly traded to where you're limited on what you can do. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, the good news is there. I don't think uh, XBW is going to go up on the publicly traded right. block. Right. I say that with 100% respect for the brand and for Rob. But uh, yeah, I think we'll keep that one. He'll probably want to keep that one private. <laughs> yeah. Or 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 forget publicly traded, but just let's say beholden to a certain standard. Let's say if you're on a network for example. Right. Um, once, once you're there. And again, we know from MTV, it was like uh, MTV itself was such a blessing and a curse at the same time, because <laughs> it was this massive platform. It was great, but oh my gosh, we're, we're limited now to do whatever we are beholden to within that network. Yeah. So, and you know, if we could have done it right, what would have happened is we, we, what we wanted to do it was get, uh, and we should have just planned it ahead of time, but we should have planned to have episode 10 really should have been a big pay-per-view event or maybe episode 11, right? And we should have started that from the beginning and pushed to a huge pay-per-view and in a more traditional kind of wrestling way. But we were looking to do all of that in season two. We, we uh, it tested so high, you know, at the pilot level. I mean, it was the most highly right. tested pilot uh, at, uh, you know, that year. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then they, they put us on this, you know, quote unquote testosterone block that had very little testosterone in it. Right. And, uh, and we were the only, we were the only uh, show that was maintaining its rating uh, target in the block. All the others failed. And then they dumped the whole block, you know, as a whole. And that, that, that's the kind of frustrating things that happen um, at the network level. You yeah. know, uh, sometimes you can be on the chopping block really even though you shouldn't be because, yeah. you know, it's a similar way. I had a, uh, my first uh, video, you'll remember this video. Uh, it's such a polar opposite thing from, you know, one day we're, we're putting out uh, one week, it's a new XPW video or it's a Lucha Libre or whatever, all the different wrestling stuff that we did. Right. And then here comes baby know-it-all animals and ABCs and colors and one, two, threes. Yeah. And I remember we did this big sell in. It was probably before you came <laughs> on to work full time in the company for a while. We did like a hundred thousand unit sell into Walmart. Now, here's the scary thing about Walmart is it's it's like a big network in a way, right? You're dealing with Walmart, but uh, they're gonna make a big order. But if they don't move them, they'll just ship them all back to you, and then the small guy is gonna be stuck with the bill, right? So, I mean, out of that order, I think 60,000, some weird numbers like 63,000 were VHS, and it was the last VHS I ever made. Oh. 
wow. any title that I ever did because it went all DVD at that point. Yeah. And we were sold into what was called a uh, kid's cube. And in the kid's cube, there was baby know-it-all, baby Einstein, and baby genius. And they came in and made a corporate decision to replace the we, record sales, by the way. Our first yeah. week sold 20,000 units, biggest sell through with our distributor. You know, it was on fire. And then Walmart makes a decision to replace the kid's cube with a fishing cube. And they sent all of them back, you uh -huh. know. So these kind of things happen, you know, and it happened with WSX. You know, uh, but but when you control it, like Rob always did with XPW, right? Uh, you know, um, you can avoid. You know, you, you it may take you longer to pop, right? Right. Um, but you'll always have control of of the distribution and what's going on with the product. So uh, that's problem. And and with today, you know, everything that's going on today, making your own content and distributing, it should be an exciting time, right? Should be, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and there is more competition because of that too. True. Um, who who is your competition now? What's as far as XBW making a resurgence? What oh, would what? be the? I mean, I think it's too early to tell, but there's there's so much going on right now. I mean, they're mm -hmm. they're like in Vegas this weekend, um, or AEW was there. I mean, there were sure. like hundred shows in town now. I mean, I can't believe how many shows there are now. I'm actually yeah. in, I'm in Vegas right now. I'm oh, living, okay. yeah, I'm living in Las Vegas now, but I actually travel back to Los Angeles all the time. That TV show behind me live at the bike is shot at the bicycle casino in Los Angeles. Oh, awesome. Um, and, uh, and, um, talking about that, the, the, um, I want to ask you really quick about, um, you, what you are, uh, you are Academy award nominated because you were in the Academy Award <laughs> nominated film, Molly's Game. Mm. Now, I have to tell you, uh, I don't know if you, uh, 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 you, you know, you, you wrote a book. Is that, is that right? I did. I did. Should have had it up here to show you. Uh, I've got a copy back there. It's uh, called Billion Dollar Hollywood Heist. Okay. And it's the true story behind Molly's Game. Okay. I was in the movie theater. I had no idea. And then I was, uh, I see the backyard wrestling. I'm like, no. You know, like by the way, it pissed me off that they didn't even call us to license our clips. They just took oh really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that was like a that was like the the last like insult to injury. Uh because I was asked to write that book around the time Molly wrote hers and I refused. Mm. But then after she put out her book and the movie came out and it had very well done. Aaron Sorgan's, yeah. you know, a great writer, and that was his directorial debut. But there were just so many things that weren't accurate. That's yeah. why I wrote, you know, my version of the story. And, what, and what's the title of your book again, Houston? Yeah, it is Billion Dollar Hollywood Heist. Okay. Uh, by Houston The true Turtle. story behind Molly's Game, yeah. And we'll put that in the, in the uh, description below as well. Um, sure. Very, very interesting. Um, did you, did we have plans, Houston? Because correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we talked a lot about WSX already, but <clears throat> going back to XPW. Yeah. When we, did, when we did the show, Cold Day in Hell, big crowd, uh, 1,500 people. Uh sold out uh pretty quickly and um and and there was a lot of interest for it then we were only five years removed from when the original xpw had folded so there was still some interest the guys were still young enough most of the roster sure. was still there wrestling <clears throat> but now we recorded that and if i recall that was kind of like it was to be put on dvd but it was also kind of the test run for what was going to potentially be monthly or bi-monthly pay-per-views not a weekly tv show but yeah pay-per-views but of course may of 08 that was right before the crash happened and the timing was just off but that was the that was that was the plan yeah, yeah we that was the plan and and i think uh you know it made total sense um what you know would have helped it is to have a, a some type of um you know internet based show or something that would uh kind of drive the pay-per-view but we were still figuring that out but the idea you know was definitely a, a once a month pay-per-view event um and then figuring out the way to a way to lead into it uh and promote it each month you know and then yeah you're right 2008 happened and you know my entire world fell apart and you know before i knew it i was uh, everything that happened in that movie, a lot of it really did happen. Uh, mm -hmm. Molly didn't run the game, which, you know, was ran by me and Toby, but the, the one guy in the movie that, that, uh, was, uh, bad Brad, they called him. 
Uh, he is so 2008 hits. That guy had been paying off his poker debts with uh, stolen hedge fund money. And I wake up one day and my, my house is worth, uh, uh, $2 million less than what I paid for it. And uh, then uh, I get a lien put on it because of this joker with the, uh, uh, it was paying his poker debts with the hedge fund money. Cause there's some kind of loophole law. They had to collect money from, you know, even though uh, he wasn't stealing from me, he was stealing from other people to pay the guys in the, in the game. Um, and everything just fell apart. You know, I, I kept the business alive for probably, I mean, you remember you were there at the end uh, for probably like six months with literally just with uh, my like poker winnings. You know, wow. we got stiffed millions of dollars from distributors. Every distributor folded. Uh, right. You know, they owed us tons of money and it was, it was a bad time for But what I didn't realize then, Chris, is that was a bad time for a lot of people. When you're going right. through it yourself, you just feel like, man, why is all this happening to me? But it was happening to an entire industry, right. an entire country. Right, you know? right. <clears throat> World. Yeah, that would have been the plan with XPW. And then after that, you know, we it kind of goes into the vault, right? Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, that vault, uh, uh, you keep saying to yourself, I'm going to come back to it. I'm going to come back to it. And, you know, Rick has had ideas. I've had ideas. And, and, uh, and then, you know, Rob said, I'm going to come back to it. And that's when, you know, he started talking to us and, and uh, I'm actually having a bunch of the masters, the glass masters and stuff sent to me. Uh, um, I should have them this week that uh, is going to be part of the, all the stuff that we're putting together for for uh, uh, for Rob. Should should he uh, end up taking over this library again, which right, I, right. I think is going to happen. Wow. It's, it's amazing. Uh, like you said, it, it all comes back full circle and uh, we're kind of seeing that right now and we'll see how it unfolds. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so um, you talked about um, your plans, uh, you know, uh, what were your plans for future shows? Was there any, was there any at uh, ever a time Houston? I mean, was there ever a time before buying or even after XPW of you, uh, starting your own wrestling company, like other wrestling companies or doing anything. I mean, you did that with WSX. I know that, but was there, mm -hmm. uh, was there ever um, plans to start anything else without those names? Without those names, you know, yeah. I mean, uh, one thing that Rick and I always talked about is at the, at the peak of uh, the one th area we, we felt we missed out on, um, with backyard wrestling, we turned this in, we turned backyard wrestling into a um, multi platinum selling DVD series mm -hmm. and then a, uh, you know, a multi million dollar pay per view generating yeah. series, just re releasing the videos themselves on pay per view. Then we made a video game, you know, yeah. that sold, uh, you know, over a million copies. The one thing we didn't do is any type of actual promotion. <laughs> you know, that's the one thing with that brand that we never did. Now it kind of, and then it, it kind of culminated into, you know, what I tried to do with WSX, but that didn't quite get it in it. WSX was kind of a, you know, XPW uh, light, whatever you, you might want to call it. Um, but I think had some of its own, you know, cutting edge stuff to it. Um, but uh you know, if we would have gone out again, we probably, it's like, why, um, you know, why, why re why start something completely new when you right. have such a great library like XPW to, uh, you know, yeah. it, it was an established brand. It's very West coast brand. If we're being fair, right. um, not that, you know, it's not known globally now because of the internet, but at the time it was, it was when we acquired it, um, very West coast. Yeah. Um, I mean, people couldn't see the shows because it wasn't a traveling promotion. So right. if you're going to see the shows, you kind of had to be, I mean, you guys did travel sometimes, but you weren't we, traveling often. We traveled, we but, but, but the, the thing that got us was we were syndicated because we had, we were on the America one. So we were in pockets. It was weird. We would be in just a random, like we'd be on in Cincinnati. We wouldn't be on in Nashville. We'd be on in new Orleans. We wouldn't be on in, uh, uh, Charlotte, like it was just we were we were spread out everywhere, but the right. pockets and we were in but, Philly on 
TV. So that's what. But what would have been cool is to support that with live shows, right? To be, to be on in Cincinnati and have a Cincinnati promotion doing XPW or something like right. that, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, that's difficult to, uh, difficult to do. And most people who start pro wrestling promotions um, are, you know, it, it's such a passionate kind of, um, you know, genre that it takes a passionate entrepreneur, uh, you know, from Dixie Carter to just think about the type of people who invested in, in yeah. pro wrestling. It's people who, you know, they've got the money and they've got the, the drive and they're willing to, uh, you know, they're willing to lose a certain amount of money to get the promotion going. Right. And it's kind of like any business, you know, if you have a new startup business, you know, you usually want to give it what three years before it's profitable. Well, you know, to find someone who's willing to do that with pro wrestling is not easy. Yeah. It's not easy, but um, you know, with a brand that has been around as long as XPW has and is now uh, being, you know, seen by new fans, brand new fans who, you know, with the internet and everything, uh, I'm sure that a lot of new fans are going to start discovering it. And if you guys start doing, uh, you know, regular shows again, um, man, you know, that the library becomes even, even more valuable. Absolutely. You know? And uh, is that the plan by the way, or are we going to, what are we going to see? Oh my gosh. I mean, you're, you're, you're not talking to Rob Black here. So um, he's, yeah, we got to get Rob on the phone. Yeah. Right. Houston. Houston. <laughs> Yeah, uh, um, it should epic be moments, man. <laughs> it, it, it should be fascinating, man. Um, yeah, and um, boy, everything, everything, um, bringing back a lot of memories, good memories here, Houston. Uh, being, a I, I, I had great memories working with with you, Chris. I had great memories working with uh, uh, with Rob uh, too. I, I hated it, you know that, uh, you know he he talk about guys who've had to recover some, from some bad beats, you know. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, Rob's like never the kind of guy that I would ever count out, you know, no. you never oh, count yeah. out a guy like that. You know, he's, uh, he's going to come back and, uh, uh, you know, he, he just has, a, uh, I think a, a passion for, for business and, and, uh, he loves what he loves and he's going to take what he loves and do something cool with it. You oh, know, yeah. and you know, it may not, he may not always make the right decisions, you know, but some of those decisions could really make it pop. <laughs> some of those wrong decisions yeah. at the right time could be great for the brand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. a, 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 a bad decision that somebody else would never make, but Rob made it. It's, oh, it could be, inter that bad decision could be entertaining in itself. <laughs> exactly, you know? exactly. Well, Now, I hope, I hope you can see yourself clear because I look clear, but you look blurry. Oh, uh, I'm hoping it's the way I see it because it looks fine on my end. So, All right, just so that. you, that, that that's good then. Okay, All cool. Right. Well, I mean, Houston, I, I think we're pretty much wrapping up here. Um, one last question uh, before we wrap up. And uh, and again, thank you, sir, for being on the show. It's good to see you again, man. It's great to see you, Chris. I always admired you, loved working with you. Uh, I wish you knew a lot about poker. You, I'd have you on commentating for poker. <laughs> I can learn. I can learn. No, I, I, I know a lot about blackjack and craps. I do know a little bit about poker. But oh, well, we may have some stuff coming up with blackjack, blackjack oh and craps. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll keep you in mind for that. Okay, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I almost like those games too much when I go to the casino. So uh, right there. Well, I just hope that when I start watching the new content you're doing, that I hear the. That you still have the voice to do the crisscross, crisscross <laughs> scream. You know how many times we edited that into WSX stuff? Oh, I, I remember, I remember, I remember. <laughs> it's all coming, over the place. I remember coming in one one time, and uh, I, I came into Burbank and X uh, um, uh, uh, Photochem, and uh, I came in to do it, and I opened the door, and you know we had like eight edit bays. And yeah. I remember like, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> yeah. and, and every I, time it would, have, I just laugh so hard. I just love that that scream. Yeah. And, and the all the editors were cool. And I remember one of the editors who came out of the room. I'm like, hey, how you doing? And he goes, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> This is like that damn scream. <laughs> oh my God. But back in the early XPW tapes, when Rick and I was started watching them, we would just crack up every time you did that scream, and we just rewind it. We'd watch it again. Uh, that was great. That was great stuff, man. Thank don't you, lose. Man. Don't lose that. 
I won't. I won't. And and I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate that, Houston. And and man, it's so good to have you on. But this is one the last question. I'll yeah, yeah. You. I'm sorry. You're, Hit it. You're, you're a busy guy. No, 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 no. Please, by all means. But in your mind, and, and I ask this to everybody that's been on the show, what what in your mind is is and will be the legacy of XPW? The legacy of XPW, and that's a great question. I think the legacy of XPW, uh, I mean, if you want one word, uh, it was the, uh, there really isn't one word. It, it was the over the top outrageousness that, uh, that came out of all of those videos, the baptized in like the, the moments that happen, like when new Jack tosses Supreme off of the rafters, when all the shit came down in the, in the, where, where, was, where was that one arena where the thing that you guys had built all like oh. falls <clears throat> apart. Yeah. The LA sports <laughs> arena and Vic Grimes coming off from new Jack, but, but yes. You know yeah. It was Vic Grimes. It was Vic Grimes, the, right? Yeah. The Sabu and Terry Funk, they just, Let's go over here. And then that was not supposed to happen, the whole thing. And it was so close to the fans, all that stuff. You're, okay, but yeah, please. But I think I think all of that, uh, you know, as far as legacy goes, you know, there's a lot of things I could say if 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 XBW were to to end now and never produce anything else, I could probably give you a you know a more specific answer. But if S XBW is to go on, uh Knowing Rob uh, as well as I know him, I think uh, he will have this solid foundation to create uh, a legacy that is yet to come. Mm. And 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 I think you guys would have the ability to do that because everybody likes a comeback, you know. And uh, uh, but if it was over right now, it, it would have to be the the thing that you remember most about XPW was, you know, the. It was from the, these, it would go from over the top kind of crude, funny moments that some people may be not want to admit that they are laughing at to the, to these crazy bloody matches. You know, I mean, you guys weren't afraid of getting hardcore, like in a, in a really hardcore way. And, uh, you know, and a lot of big, big wrestlers came on, guys from WWE and WCW and ECW, and they got hardcore on XPW, man. Like, they yeah. took it to another level. And I think, yeah. you know, when people really think of XPW, they think of it was the most extreme thing there was. It was super, super extreme. You know, and, 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 and whether that was extreme in Black Santa Claus on the TV show, <laughs> you know, which um, yeah. was, can you imagine trying to release that today? Can you imagine? No, couldn't be done. I mean, I, mean, I mean, we were cringing even kind of at the time because <laughs> because people look at it's interesting you bring that up because people look at that and say, "I can't believe you guys were allowed to do that." I tell them like, "No, no, 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 no. This wasn't allowed <laughs> done either." You know, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe that's it, Chris. I think you know you helped me answer the question. the The legacy of XPW, uh, as far as I can tell is Rob was never afraid to break the rules. That's right. You know? Yeah. And and sometimes sometimes you got to break the rules uh to succeed and uh you know and and I I I hope that uh I, I Rob always uh picks the right times to do that because I I I wish him and the promotion nothing but the absolute best if you guys really try and make a, a go of it again. Thank you so much, Houston. And, and right, I'm brother. sure everybody, everybody uh, on the XPW side, uh, same to you. Best of luck with everything you're doing. Uh, you are uh, an aficionado. And I was there with all the Phil Hellmuth stuff. And, and yeah, you know, yeah, you that you got all the experience in the world. One of the great poker players in all of. Uh, all well, of, if, so, if 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 uh, if there's any guys out there who like uh, poker or sleight of hand, I've got a website, uh, Card Sharp. Uh, but mostly I've, uh, live at the bike is a huge, the longest running poker stream in history. And I just came in and took it over. We sold it to Bally's and, and we're looking at, you know, do big, big things with it. So live at the bike.com or, or live at the bike on YouTube, we put four hour streams together, like, you know, usually Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and some of the biggest high stakes games, our last game, there was like $400,000 pots in one game. 
Wow. You know, so it's a lot of money on the line. And and uh, and you'll see, like, pro wrestling fans, they'll, they'll start seeing the little promos, and they're like, oh, it makes sense that, that, that the exec producer yes. has a background in the wrestling business. So. Well, I'll, I'll practice. I'll practice. You said on the blackjack, let's say the dealer's got a 10 show and, and, and the player's got a 16 and he hits and he gets a five right when that five hits. Ah! <laughs> there it is. That's what we need. That's what we need. Oh I need God. to, I, I swear to God, I, I, I got to grab that scream and throw it into some of these poker promos. Like when the dude gets rivered for like his entire stack. <laughs> That's what it's missing, Chris. Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, if you want as a guest commentator one day, and, and we won't tell the other poker guy, who's going to be a straight up poker nerd, uh, that every time like someone gets bad beat, you're going to scream. <laughs> that would be great. Let's let's do that. Change the poker world, man. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, hey, thanks for having me on. Congrats on your show. Thank you. Man. Uh, and, and uh, to you too, man. And, and, yeah, and this, do you want to plug anything else before we take off here? No, man, I, I just wish I was uh, I had something, uh, you know, very pro wrestling related that that uh, that I could plug for your show. But, um, you know, uh, if I do uh, down in the future, and I probably will because I love pro wrestling. Yeah. Um, I'll let you know. And uh, and we can go from there. The one thing that I would say is have your ask your fans what they think about yeah. um you know a ww uh, or wsx release of all the line cuts un the unaltered line cuts some of them were an hour and a half long or whatever that got cut down to the 24 minute show okay yeah fans please do so right down below throw your comments down houston curtis uh ceo of big vision entertainment uh xpw as well as what you're doing now uh in the in the uh the gaming world in las vegas nevada thank you so much sir for being on here pleasure seeing you again man great to see you brother you look great you too congrats man. i'll talk to you soon all right take care houston thank you everybody bye everybody thank you for watching extreme memories hosted by chris Kloss. he's dropping new episodes every month on the 15th and 30th you can be the first to tune in by subscribing to the wrestling chatter channel right here on youtube see you next time